In this video, you'll learn the basic concept of free fall. So we define free fall as an object falling only under the influence of gravity. So this means that there's no air resistance, there's no uh, air drag, uh, there's no one pulling or pushing on the object. The only thing that's pulling on the object is uh, the force of gravity. Now, um, let me give you a couple examples of free fall. So maybe you have a ball and you drop it. And what we notice about uh, the ball, or maybe it's a rock that you drop, is that it goes faster and faster as you release the ball and as it's falling. Um, not only is falling, uh, a, a rock falling, considered free fall, you could also have a, uh, a rock or a ball that you throw upwards. So you're going to throw it upwards and notice that it um, gets closer and closer over here uh, because it's uh, slowing down. Right. So if I were to include some um, some velocity vectors, uh, uh, it maybe it might look something like this because it's going faster and faster and faster and falling. But if I throw a rock up, um, it's going to go slower and slower and slower. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and label this velocity, and then here's my velocity there. Okay. Now, one thing to understand about um, free fall is that the acceleration uh, is always in the down direction. Uh, so let me make a note of that. So the acceleration is always down down direction. And the acceleration is constant. Acceleration is constant. Um, and it's, it's uh, when we experimentally um, uh, measure this, uh, we get a number that is 9.8 uh, meters per second squared or 9.8 meters per second per second. Oftentimes, we will just round this. We'll just round this to about 10 meters per second squared, uh, just because it's just an easier number uh, to work with when we're doing calculations. The really interesting thing about this acceleration due to gravity, um, let me go ahead and write that. Sometimes refer to this as the acceleration uh, due to gravity. And um, we have a letter for this. We'll, we'll often say that we'll give it the symbol G. So G is equal to 10 meters per second squared, okay, or at least approximate. The interesting about this is that it doesn't depend on um, this this number, this number, uh, 10 meters per second, um, 10 meters per second squared, doesn't depend on the mass of the object. So in other words, I could take um, something that's really heavy and something that's light and I could drop it. There's no air resistance. It will have the same acceleration. It'll hit the ground at the same time. Does it uh, depend on the mass um, or speed? So it doesn't, it's not affected by the mass or speed um, or the direction, okay? Or direction of travel. So you could have um, a hammer and a feather, um, which was done on the moon, um, where the astronauts dropped them. They hit the ground at the same time. The moon has uh, a lower acceleration due to gravity, about um, 1.7, um, but it hit the ground at the same time. Um, on the Earth, in a vacuum chamber, you have a bowling ball and a feather. You can drop it, and it'll hit the ground at the same time because it has the same free fall acceleration. Now let's... Um, analyze a little bit more closely an object that we throw up that falls back down. So uh, I'm going to assume that this ball um, here, and I'm going to represent it with the dot, uh, is going up and then going straight up and then coming straight down. I'm not going to draw the dots right on top of the other ones, um, right above the other ones, because when it comes down it's going to overlap. But I want you to know that this is representing a ball that's throwing straight up. On the way up, the velocity is going to be in the up direction. The velocity is in the up direction. On the way down, the velocity is in the down direction. The way to remember this is that the velocity is always in the direction that it's moving. So if it's moving up, the velocity is going to be up. When it's moving down, the velocity is going to be going to be coming down. Okay. So direction of velocity uh, when the object rises, 
the velocity is in the up direction. When the object falls, the velocity is in the down direction. And notice that as it rises, it slows down. It slows down. Uh, as it falls, it speeds up. Slows down and speeds up. Okay. Now, I want to think about uh, the acceleration. How about the acceleration? So uh, I'm going to draw the same picture again, the same um, uh, dot diagram, but this time it's going to be for acceleration. So for acceleration, remember that it's constant, about 10 meters per second squared, and it's going to be in the down direction. Um, and the reason for this is because the gravitational force is in the down direction. And what's very interesting is that even at the highest point, at the highest point, the acceleration, there's still an acceleration. Um, it might not, not be so obvious at first, but if you think about it, even at the highest point, the object's velocity is changing. And so even at the highest point, it's going from, uh, at an instant, it's not moving, and now it's coming, it's in the process of coming back down. So even at the highest point, the acceleration, uh, the velocity is changing, so it has to have an acceleration. And not only that, the acceleration um, vector is going to be constant this whole time. Right? So the direction of acceleration um, as it rises is going to be down. As it falls, is going to be down. Um, so we say that uh, the acceleration is constant, constant. And even at the highest point, even at the peak, it still has an acceleration in the downward direction because it's in the process of coming back down. Now let's try to apply uh, this number of the acceleration uh, being about 10 meters per second squared in the down direction. Okay. Sometimes you might see it as uh, a negative number. If you make a positive, um, then it would have a negative g would be, you know, the acceleration then would be negative 10. Um, but uh, let's take a look at an example here. So let's say I threw a ball straight up and I want to uh, put some numbers um, use use some you know, simple numbers to analyze this, uh, and let's say we're looking at the uh, velocity. Okay, so we know that the velocity is upwards and decreasing on the way up, and it's uh, go it's it's downwards on the way down, and it's increasing. Okay, now what you'll know is that um, I'm I'm going to go ahead and label these, give these some some letters A, B, C. D, E, and F. Uh, what you're going to notice is that at A, oops, I, I think I we have two C's there, so let me fix that. C, D, E, F, G. So what you're going to notice uh, that is that at uh, D, um, the velocity is zero. So let me make a note of that. So at D, the velocity velocity at D is zero okay um, but let's think of look think about the other um, locations at C and E they will both have the same uh, same speed at B and F they will have the same speed at A and G they will have at the same speed and what we what we mean by 10 meters per second uh, squared is that every second the speed is changing by 10 meters per second. So on its way up, it's losing, on the way up, it's losing 10 meters per second every second. On the way down, it's increasing its speed by 10 meters per second per second. Um, and so let's start from the top coming down. So from D to E, if each dot represents um, uh, a, a second um, between the two dots, it's a one second interval, uh, then at E, this velocity is going to be 10 meters per second. At F, the velocity is 20 meters per second. And then at G, it's going to be 20 meter, uh, 30, 30, 30 meters. Let me fix that. So it's going to be 30 meters 
per second, okay? And and remember, C and E uh, is going to have the same velocity. It's going to be 10 meters per second. At B, it's going to be 20 meters per second. And A, the velocity will be at 30 meters per second. So notice A and G has the same velocity, B and F has the same velocity, C and E have the same velocity, and uh, D, the highest point for an instant, it is not moving. Now, um, these this would be fine if we we're talking about speed, but if we're talking about velocity, then we need to take into account the direction. So uh, one way to do that is, you know, I do have arrows. The other way is to put a negative if it's in a negative direction. So let's say that we made a down positive. Okay, so let's say if down, down was positive, okay, then that means up is negative. So then for A, I would put a negative there, I would put a negative, negative. So all that negative means is just telling us if uh, the direction of um, uh, that value, uh, that quantity. In this case, we're talking about velocity. Is the velocity in up direction or is the velocity in the down direction?